Hi Booktube, I'm here today with a review of Stand on Zanzibar by John Brunner. This is a soft science fiction novel from 1968. This is a story of a very overpopulated world that is basically run by a giant computer. We follow arguably two main characters, Norman House, who is a black Muslim man who's trying to navigate his way through the very wasp uh, dominated business world of America, and he's given the opportunity to be in a very powerful position to rule this uh, utopian um, society um, through this corporation. And then we have his roommate Donald Hogan, who is a white man, he's a dilettante, uh, eventually becomes a spy, who is sent to this made-up Asian place called Yakutang, um, where he's trying to uh, start a revolution and stop this scientific progress from happening there. But Stand on Zanzibar is about so much more than that. It's largely about the format of the book, really. Um, it follows the Innis mode, uh, which is described by Marshall McLuhan, who is a pretty famous linguist, and I'm just gonna read you uh, the beginning of the book here, uh, where he explains the Innis mode and what he's trying to accomplish in this book. There is nothing willful or arbitrary about the Innis mode of expression. Were it to be translated into perspective po prose, it would not only require a huge space, but the insight into the modes of interplay among forms of organization would also be lost. Innis sacrificed point of view and prestige to a sense of the urgent need for insight. A point of view can be a dangerous luxury when substituted for insight and understanding. As Innes got more insight, he abandoned any mere point of view in his presentation of knowledge. When he interrelates the development of the steam press with the consolidation of the vernaculars and the rise of nationalism and revolution, he is not reporting anybody's point of view, least of all his own. He is setting up a mosaic configuration or galaxy for insight. Innes makes no effort to spell out the interrelations between the components in his galaxy. He offers no consumer packages in his later works, but only do-it-yourself kits. So basically, it's like a maximalist type novel where here's just a whole bunch of information, you pit it together. And the way that he does that is through four different modes of conveying his story. Um, the first mode is the um, context, which is quite interesting. Um, it can be uh, just a list of quotes, um, it could be excerpts from books, um, descriptions of TV shows or commercials, it can just be random charts like this um, that actually do make sense in the whole context of a story, hence why they're called context. The next mode he uses is the happening world, uh, which as you can see here um, tends to be like a lot of uh, separate you know, kind of quotes and stuff like that. But what it is, is basically, it, it feels like you're walking down the street and it's descriptions of posters or words that are on the posters, the snippets of conversation that you're hearing. Um, this scene right here is kind of like you're standing in front of a, a, a community board that's advertising, you know, like rooms for rent and newspaper clippings are stuck up there and then there's conversation going on around you. Um, so it's very much the world as it is happening. Um, the next is the uh, tracking with close-ups, which um, are basically anecdotes of lesser characters. Um, so you may only see them for, you know, these few pages. Um, they may pop up again later. Um, but they're like little stories, little side stories that add to the world and kind of show you the bigger picture of what's going on. And the last one is the continuity, which is where our actual plot happens. Um, so it's really interesting. It is a wonderful, amazing way to world build um, in that you're given all these pieces of information and it feels real because like you're getting, you know, a commercial, you're getting, you know, a newspaper clipping, you're getting a list of apartments for rent. The stuff that he writes can be quite shocking and uh, can be quite disturbing, um, especially in the tracking with close-ups. We encounter one teenager who gets off on killing his mother, um, another priest uh, who is on 
drugs while giving a uh, sermon and begins to hallucinate uh, to the widespread acceptance and arguably necessity of prostitution in this world. Um, the book's about social criticism, it's about gender issues, it's about racism, it's about corporatism, technology, the meaning of life. Basically, what isn't this book about? Uh, it'd be a lot easier to talk about it then, right? Um, we have a cast of quite diverse characters. Um, we encounter all the races. Um, he, we're, we're literally going across the world, um, you know, from, you know, the the diversity in America to African nations to Asian nations and it is wonderful. We get perspectives of people from all different parts of life, uh, women who are prostitutes, women who are CEOs and everything in between. It is amazing. This novel is really cool. I'd say if you're a fan of dystopian novels, uh, 1984, uh, Brave New World, We, this is the novel for you. If you're a fan of experimental postmodern literature, uh, House of Leaves and such like that, this is a novel for you. It is a novel for everyone. It has a little bit of everything for everyone. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's Tanned on Zanzibar. Let me know if you've read anything like this before, and thank you for watching.